Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. Today we're gonna to be piecing together hydrangeas so that you can see how it was added to my 3D letter. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I appreciate all the help that I can get. Um, let's get started. So I did these hydrangeas, gosh, years ago. They're from Leah Griffith. You can um, get the link in my profile or in the description below. And I absolutely loved it. I made it, like I said, I made it three years ago. I actually repurposed these. They used to be in a stem, which I don't have right now, but they look so real. I've taken pictures with my daughter holding one and holding my fake one and holding real ones. And they look right in the bunch. Like, you know, if you, I did, uh, I think I did a picture where I was holding like five bunches of hydrangeas and one was the fake one and you couldn't see which one was the fake one. So here are some tips. Um, first of all, for this M, which is, gosh, let me see how tall it is. Cause this one, I did use 12 by 24 cardstock to make it bigger. It's a nine inch high letter. So it's pretty big. Um, I ended up using the each petal is a little bit over an inch. So when you get her template, it's just like a whole sheet of hydrangeas to be cut. Um, I did it just a slightly over an inch, maybe about 1.25 inches. So the key is, there are a couple tips. <laughs> um, tip number one is you wanna get it in a few colors in that range. And the reason why is it really you see how it kind of blends in? I think that makes it look really, really good. So I have three shades of pink, real, a really light pale one, and then one that has a little bit more color and then just a dark one. And you see like you alternate it. The other nice thing about these flowers, these hydrangeas, is that they're connected. I used a hot glue gun and I connected one petal at a time. So one petal from this flower, connecting to one petal on this flower like this, and so you just glue it together and you have like um, a whole string of them. So what's nice is, you see, I didn't glue all this down. I only glued the top part down. So this could still be moved around. I can, you know, you can really work with them. Um, they're really flexible and they're also like springy and bouncy. So they look, they don't look very, you know, flat at all. They're the opposite of flat, right? And like I said, what I like about them is you only have to glue a few pieces in place. Like I glued this one down here and this one up here, but this can still move and still give movement. Um, so it just looks very uh, more real. Um, and so, you know, like these are hanging. Basically I put one here because I had a mistake here, right? The letters didn't line up perfectly. Um, so wherever you have mistakes, these flowers are perfect for it. So let me show you how to go about doing them. All right, so I'm gonna move that aside. You may notice Isabel is here, Isabella. And that's because I'm gonna go live tomorrow on YouTube, which I'm super excited. It's the first time I'm doing it. Besides the test one that I did today. The test one that I did today was a few minutes, so I don't want that to be considered against me. <laughs> but I was just testing for sound quality and to make sure that it all still works. So, all right, so that's tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific. I'm gonna be piecing her together. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna try to use this flower in there somehow for the letter I. Um, so I'll be doing a 3D letter, not tomorrow, but I will be doing a 3D letter in this series. Um, and I want to use these purple flowers for her because I feel like it's it's gonna match her her color scheme with her dress and everything and just a different type of flower. And I'm gonna do the hydrangeas in purple for her dress, I think and then also for the 3D letter. So just so that it has something more. All right, that's a lot of talking. <laughs> All right, this one is specifically from Leah Griffith. You don't need this. You can use this, you can use your Cricut one. The smaller one's the easier one because you know these petals are small, so it's gonna be easier to use a smaller one, which I have a smaller one. Oh, here it is. You can also use these little boning tools, right? They're on Amazon, super, super cheap. I like having all of them to see which one, sometimes a project calls for something specific. And so, um, but I'm gonna be holding, these two are pretty much identical. The only thing different is hers has like, you see how it just has like an indentation. So they're specifically for flowers. I haven't really 
I'm not good enough at flowers to know the difference between this tool and this tool, to be honest with you. <laughs> so I'm gonna use this one because I had it in my flower bin and it was with all my stuff. All right, so to make this, these are really flat, they're all the same. So you can see, I mean, they're like flat, flat, right? So you wanna just hold it up and the smaller, you know, your petals, um, the thinner this piece is gonna be. So I always kinda put my thumb over it so that I don't actually just rip it off, okay? And then I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take it this way, and I'm just curling it. And you see how much that paper took to the curl? It's, it's pretty magical. <laughs> this is 80 pound cardstock paper, and for it to just kinda curl up like ribbon, right? Like when you do this on like those, um, I don't even know what kind of ribbon you call it, but the ones that you tie on with the balloon. So you can see like now my petals are not flat at all. They totally curl up and you can some, you can, you know, curl in more. It's totally up to you. You can make this look a lot smaller than it is. You can also, so I did this with the, with the mix of the three, um, papers the three colors it was enough on my hydrangea bunch like I said to make it look really real um, but she also has like ink pads to kind of like get in the different shades so that you really blend in the pinks which I think would look really really good um, I just you know I didn't do it <laughs> And you want to do like a smooth, like one full curl out, okay? So I'm going to hold it in the middle. Um, you see my tool is right here. I have my middle, any finger, but I'm using my middle finger to kind of, um, I'll do it this, this way so you can see it now, to just give it um, like stability so it's not going to rip off. So that's what I'm doing. And then I'm just kind of flicking it out. Okay, so I have those two and then I'm missing this color and then I'm gonna show you this is super super easy and you know your Cricut cuts it super fast this is an easy template for it to cut and then you can you know do this more if you wanted to all right so I've got my glue gun I'm just going to add a little bit of heat to one petal a little bit of glue and then I'm gonna attach petal to petal Then this one I'm going to add here. It really doesn't matter where you add it. You want to just connect it. Um, so I'll do a few. So um, right now these three, it's almost like they're in a line, right? Oops, and that wasn't very, you know, it. I didn't even match it up. Look at that. <laughs> but it's okay because when it's all together, it's going to look good. You can even connect. Oops, did that one just pop off? I don't think my glue is hot enough. It just popped off. I'm gonna re-add the glue. All right, let me do that again. So what I was saying earlier is you can actually now, instead of making, adding, like continuing on and just doing one long line, you could even close this up. So you see, then it becomes, it looks like this. I'm gonna close this one up just so that you can see it. And also, cause I already had glue from this one, <laughs> just to hide the glue. So like I said earlier, um, this one really helps to hide all the seams. But you see like now all of a sudden you don't have like a very flat flower, right? And you can just kind of like add it on and it just blends in and it looks so nice. Um, so you can close them up, right? Like I said, you can close them up or you can, like even on this one, I can continue to add on this way, right? Or I can add a set, right? So I'm gonna do that now just so that you can see. Um, and then I'm gonna do a set of purple ones for uh, Isabella. And see then they, you know, it just, it's so pretty. They just look like cherry blossoms too. like. Um, I know they're hydrangeas, but see, and then these two colors are overlapping. 
they're really close in tone but like it now it's just it's just I love it it's just magical I love these flowers um all right so that's it and then while I'm here while we're doing this and such a quick tutorial um in case you missed it for this 3d blotter the other thing I did was the stitching which I've done a few times but this one will be a short video so what you need to do is I use a white pencil and I basically draw out the swirls. So like if I wanted to do this, for instance, this yellow line, I'm just going to do my swirls and you can see it there. Okay. Then I have like anything that is, this is my Abby Kirsten flower pad that she uses to roll her flowers. I'm just going to use it now. Um, I do have this We Are Memory Keepers pin tool. It's from the, the book binding kit that they have. The reason why I like this is it has a handle because I tried stitching just based on my template, but the needle started to hurt my thumb. So you need something to protect your thumb and to be able to like uh, help you push it. So if you have one of those thumb protectors, you can use that. But I had this and this works perfectly. So now that I have my line, I'm going to use this to punch in my holes so that when I go to thread it, it's much easier for me to just thread through. And this, you can see how fast I'm going and making these holes. There is a trick to making these holes. You want to be, um, you want to stay equal distance if you can. And, you know, sometimes I start to go really fast because I get bored. And so, yeah, there's definitely, it's not equal distance, but it's okay. It still looks good. You can see it here. This was not equal distance. Very close, but not. Um, <laughs> then the other thing is, while you want it to be equal of equal distance, what you don't want is the holes to be too close to each other. Because if you can imagine if the holes are too close to each other and you start to poke it through with your needle, you could pop open the little paper that's in between the holes and then you have a gigantic hole, which is a big no-no. It looks horrible that way, okay? So don't put it so close that like you could accidentally pop it open. Okay, and then I had already started over here, but you know, you just, you tie the end or you don't even need to tie the end. Just don't let this go all the way through, okay? Um, and because it's paper, it's not gonna slip through. So you can hear it. It's gonna stay like that. So I don't really need to tie this at the end. I did on this one, but I didn't have to, because look, here's where the, it got stuck right here. But the knot is all the way over here. If I cut the knot right here, this would be fine. It's not going anywhere. So I love the way this looks. All right, I'm gonna do just a few so you can see it. Um, and I've been putting this in my, in my post this may look really tedious and annoying and boring, but there's something about it. I really love it. If I can incorporate, when I can incorporate this into a project, I definitely will. I think it allows me to add color to it, you know, to make it like cohesive. Um, it also is just so pretty. It makes it different than just a cardstock project. So you can see this, the distance between these two holes is much bigger, <laughs> right? A little bit longer than the others, but it's okay. Um, I feel like when you're stitching enough, it'll look fine. Now, when I'm going across, cause I'm doing a loop, I feel like the next hole is too far away. I will reuse this hole that I already did. Okay, to make it shorter, and then I'll pop back out right here. See, it's so pretty. All right, let me know if you have any comments or questions. Um, I absolutely love this little guy right here. Let me turn on, actually before I let you go, let me turn on the lights. Hopefully you can see it. This butterfly, I added the rhinestones only to the edges, really small ones, but it's enough. I mean, I think you can see it in the te on the monitor right now. It's just enough to catch the light and give it extra, like, extra flare. All right, 
on the back I have five lights on this and the reason is because let me pull them out I have one colored light and the rest the other four are just the white lights on my Amazon and the colored one is this one right here I know it's kind of hard to see right now the reason why is because I wanted some color but I didn't want a lot of color and I also the reason why I added five lights is because I wanted the whole butterfly to have light um, and I didn't want the light to come through on just like one part of the the butterfly because in the movie the whole butterfly is lit up right so you can kind of see right now and depending on the angle that you look it gives it more light i would like to add even more lights but it was kind of hard to get in there with my hands so i kept it at five so you can kind of see that's what it looks like here's what it looks like from the bottom um yeah, I love this project. All right. Anyway, uh, comments, questions, what you want to see, let me know. Um, I'm going to see you hopefully tomorrow on YouTube Live. And if you're not on, you can always catch me later. All right. Um, all right. See you guys. Bye.